good afternoon friends ladies and gentlemen uh, i'll try to cover a few things because it's a huge topic you know urban transportation mass transit systems rail based mass transit systems visa vi lots of other things elevated versus underground and all these things there's not much time and what kind of problems we faced in hyderabad and how we successfully solved i'll try to briefly touch upon in about uh, 20 25 minutes as most of us are aware we are in post industrial era each era has its own distinct characteristics its own distinct issues every era if it's an agrarian era it is land that's the most important source of wealth if it is industrial era it's capital that's the most important source of wealth in the present post industrial era it's we the talented and creative individuals the knowledge workers are the real source of wealth in this post industrial era whichever city whichever urban agglomeration provides better living conditions got better living conditions those urban agglomerations attract these talented and creative individuals so jobs are basically shiftable the industry which is basically knowledge based industry is shiftable we have to keep that in mind so in a post industrial era environment more than the nations definitely nations do compete they'll have to compete more and more but more than the nations it is these cities or the urban agglomerations which compete with each other we have to completely change our mindsets actually the night life which we provide in a city the kind of law and order position that's prevalent in those cities the safety and security of the women employees etc become extremely important okay how women can freely go even in midnight okay because most of these industries are in night shifts they'll be working actually see if that kind of a nirbhaya kind of incidents happen in this country uh, we can't attract international talent we are only a 35% urbanization in india okay even backward countries many backward countries have already reached 50% urbanization advanced countries they are at 80% 90% urbanization so we are initially at a very low level of thing uh, but the kind of urban urbanization that's taking the place in this country it's rapid especially in the last 2 3 decades and massive urbanization has been taking place the speed and scale of urbanization that is taking place today in india is next only to china nowhere in the world you know this kind of rapid urbanization has taken place because the country got left behind for a long time now you have to catch up now people have realized that 80% of your taxes are coming from urban areas okay 70% of all the new jobs are being created in urban areas unless and until you separate your urban structures urban infrastructure and other facilities this country will not progress that is clear so engines the urban areas are the engines of economic growth in the next two decades this will become double okay 60 crore people are going to be in indian urban areas imagine that means in the next two decades another america will be added to the urban population of india okay that's a huge challenge developed countries have achieved 20% urbanization 20% car ownership or even beyond the richer sections of india now they are having three cars four cars in each family imagine what will happen to indian conditions today itself urban commute is becoming a nightmare okay when the prosperity levels increase when the urbanization increases from 35% to say 50% imagine the fate of indian cities urban areas but at the same time it gives you an excellent opportunity to completely reshape your urban infrastructure and plan our cities and towns in such a way that we should not repeat the mistakes of the west western cities western urban areas made mistakes most of the cities in the world actually were built basically as car centric cities then they realized that actually the american model of car centric city is not the solution in fact that will create more and more problems it's not an energy efficient one it's not an economically efficient model okay. as you know the planning commission for india to grow at uh, the normal growth rates of course so last couple of years the growth rates have come down and say this year even they're talking about 5 or 5.5% 8% 
growth rate we is easily achieved. To maintain these kind of growth rates, you require, as planning commissions, that famous figure of trillion dollars. Okay, out of which 50 percent should come from the public-private partnership route, PPP route, from the private side. You require to build about 8,400 kilometers of mass transit systems, rail-based mass transit systems in urban areas, because what happens is up to, within public transportation, up to a particular level, road-based mass transit systems, the bus systems can take care, but beyond that, unless you have 3-lane BRT or 4-lane BRT, etc., which is not feasible in most of the Indian cities and or most cities of the world, unless you have that kind of huge 8-lane uh, carriageways or at least four lane on each side, actually you will not be able to spare two lanes. Normally, you go for rail based mass transit systems. To give you a rough figure, if it is an elevated mass transit system, rail based mass transit system, the metro rails which we call in India, it costs about 200 crore per kilometer. If it is underground system, it costs anywhere between 450 to 500 crore per kilometer. Imagine the humongous resources that are required to build these mass transit systems. Okay. With the success of Delhi Metro, all of the cities started dreaming about the Metro and in no time today, more than 10 cities in India, we are all in the process of building mass transit systems. That is one. Second thing is, then this question of raising this kind of resources came, as I mentioned actually, see, to build even a, an ordinary mass transit system of about 30-40 kilometers, it is costing most of these projects are in the range of, you know, about 10,000 crore to 20,000 crore range. This is the range, you know, so most of the cities are contemplating. My project, for example, it is about 14,000 crore project because it is a completely elevated system. How do we raise this kind of resources? There are two methods, okay, for raising resources for whether it is urban uh, mass transit projects or any other infrastructure projects, okay. So far as urban mass transit project is concerned, Government of India broadly follows, either you can do it as a government model where government of India and the state government concerned 50-50, okay, uh, they share the equity and the rest you can see uh, about 50 to 55 percent you know, so they go for JICA or some other loan, you know, most of the mass transit system or any other big infrastructure project up to 40 percent of the project cost can be funded through what is called viability gap funding okay, scheme. Under the viability gap funding scheme, first 20 percent of the gap, okay, the criteria is basically the criterion is you have to have a two stage bid process. They would have uh, talked about you know, see how uh, this RFQ that is a request for qualification, RFP that is a request for proposal okay, that is the pre-qualification process and the financial bid process. All these processes will have to be followed. Once you select technically shortlist the companies or consortia. You have to go for L1 that is who asks for the least viability gap funding. Remaining thing will have to be borne by the private sector. Now, so this is broadly uh, the structure. We have opted for, deliberately we have opted for PPP. There are advantages and disadvantages. There are debates and debates. Okay. Some great people said that a mass, project, a mass transit project cannot be done as PPP. Yes, I do agree. For everything, there is a first. Okay. I keep saying this particular thing because nobody has done in the world. There are 200 mass transit projects in the world. Out of the 200 mass transit projects, only four are making money. They are Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Taipei. All other metro rail projects in the world, they are making losses. They are being heavily subsidized by the governments. Okay. Second thing is, Nowhere in the world actually a mass transit project is, has succeed, has become a success in PPP mode or by the private sector. There are not many examples also, less than half a dozen only are built. Since nobody has done it, it cannot be done, right? Very good. You can take that approach, but that is not the thing. If that is the thing, man would have never entered space, man would have never set foot on moon. For everything there is a first, this is the first thing actually we have attempted. We wanted to prove to the world that India is capable of building a, an entire mass transit system from end to end. That is the DBFOT, design, build, finance, operate and transfer. The entire spectrum can be done, such a huge mass transit project can be built by Indians in PPP mode. We wanted to prove to the world. 
as Rustam ji famously said, it is not the business of government to be in business, actually, see. Business is best left to the business people, the private sector, the entrepreneurship should come, okay. That's why in my project, actually, see, I refuse to give traffic guarantee. The moment I give traffic guarantee, they become bureaucratic, actually, see, they sit tight, okay. As uh, some of uh, these power projects have failed, okay, same thing will happen, why should I work hard, actually, so you have to encourage private sector to come up with their innovative skills to come up with their business acumen so that the best practices are followed actually these projects become financially viable the efficiencies which we can get through this public private partnership group, this is how we have opted for that but there are no arguments actually say you can go for a government model if you have the money if you are capable of managing all other my uh, colleagues elsewhere my counterparts elsewhere they are doing extremely good job be it delhi metro be it Chennai Metro, be it uh, Bangalore Metro or Jaipur Metro anywhere, so they are doing equally good job. Okay? These are two different models we are adopting. We have gone for the PPP route for certain reasons.